Hey, how you doing? Scott here from scottsbasslessons.com and I'm smiling like this because I tried to start this video how many times do you Mac? Five wow. times, six times. If you want to see the outtakes, check out the end of the video. Anyway, as I said, Scotty from scottsbasslessons.com. If you haven't been to scottsbasslessons.com, do so at the end of this video. I'll put a link below and go and check out the toolkit as well because there's a free baseline creation guide. There's a backing track library. There's a like a buyer's guide that we've put together. Loads of cool free stuff for you. So go check it out and subscribe to the YouTube channel as well while you're at it. Anyway, today I just wanted to give you a little tip because it's something that I am guilty of as well. Essentially, it's Practicing arpeggios. Now, arpeggios are super important, and I'm, I'm going to go into why in a minute. But practicing arpeggios the same way up as we do down. Okay, so, and I'm sure you know what I mean. We play arpeggios. Let's take a C major arpeggio, right? So, that's a C major two octave arpeggio. And there, I just went up and down it exactly the same way. And it's something that I think it, um, who knows where it's, where it came from, but it just seems so, uh, it makes sense, doesn't it, to practice it the same way up. Same way, yeah, same way up as we, same way ascending. Let's, let's use real English. Same way ascending as we do descending. But sometimes it's really good to mix it up. And an exercise that I love, which is the exercise I want to tell you today, is focusing around triads. Now, playing triads on the bass is a little bit awkward anyway because there's some big shifts. So, for instance, let's start off with the C major triad, ascending. Okay, that's C major triad, ascending. And I'm just going to say the note names and then I'm going to say the, uh, the chord tones within it. Okay, so it's C, E, G... C, E, G, C at the top. And usually when practicing stuff like this, people, including myself, will tend to... You know, go up and down the same way. But why? Because we don't really play like that, do we? You know, not if we're playing really well and we've got a good visualization of the fingerboard, we're going where the music takes us. So it might not take us down the same way as we went up. So what I'm posing is that it's a really good, you know, it's, I'm not saying just do it this, like, like don't do the same way. You should 100% be practicing them just like I showed you. What I'm saying is you should also be adding in something else into the mix, which is descending in a different fingering than you've ascended in. There's a lot of ascending and descending here, isn't it? It's almost like climbing Mount Everest. Anyway, so we're going to go up exactly like I showed you. So root, third, fifth, root, third, fifth, root. But then when you get to here, this top one, this beautiful one, and we're going to descend differently. So we're going to go root, fifth, third, root, fifth, third. And then start again. So... different vibe and a different movement around the fingerboard. As I said, we don't generally play the same way. So it's good to be able to mix it up like this. And that's just over a C major triad, okay? These chord tones are really important it's because what this is what we build our bass lines from. If somebody said, what does a guitar player do? I mean, he strums chords, um, you know, 95% of the time when he's not, you know, doing crazy tapping solos. So when he's not doing that, He's doing, um, he's just playing chords. What do keyboard players do? You know, generally, you know, 95% of the time when they're not going, wah, 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 uh, they're just playing chords, okay? What do bass players do? Well, when we're not, you know, doing whatever we do, we are playing chords, but instead of, instead of playing chords like that, we play them in a linear way. So we outline the chords as we go, as they go by. So our job is exactly the same as the guitar players or the keyboard players. It's to outline the chords as they go by throughout a piece of music. 
How do we do that? Well, we start with the chord tones. The roots, the thirds, the fifths, the sevenths sometimes, you know. Which is why it's important that we know our chord tones all around the neck. So, back to this C major triad exercise. What we're doing is breaking away oh, from ascending or descending exactly the same as we ascended. So that was on the C major. Now, not, why not the C minor? So C minor, ascending. Again, so root, minor third. I actually bring the, the first finger over here now. So fifth, bar it, minor third, fifth, root, okay, octave. As I said, triads are a little bit harder than regular arpeggios on bass just because of the shifts that you have to do. But that's good for us, right? It's character building. Oh, beep, boop, boop, boop. Um, it's on the computer. So we're going to go root, minor third, fifth, root, minor third, fifth, root. And then on the way down, we're going to go down a different way. Okay, so, you know, you can make up your own as long as they're, you know, they're within these, you know, using the same notes. So root, fifth, minor third, root, fifth, minor third, root. So that will look like this. We have the major. Again. Without me fluffing it. And then the minor one. And then why not for fun? We'll do a sharp five, right? So root, major third, sharp five, root, major third, sharp five, root. And then we're gonna descend in a completely different way. Root, sharp five, third, root, sharp five, third, root. So it's gonna look something like this. Oops. So we did the major. Major augmented. And you can loop these round, you know, so you just go and, and you know, see how fast you can do them. That was the major, then the minor, and onwards, you know. And the augmented, and then you could do diminished and things like that, you know, play around with it. But I'm just putting it out there that we don't have to ascend and descend in the same fingering. And when I'm playing bass lines, say for instance, using arpeggios, let's say on a groove on uh, C major, okay, so. Now, I'm do what I'm doing there is going where my ear takes me. I'm using the using the information that I have that C major is here, and and then when it went to the F, you know, I'm using where the F is. But the the chord tone patterns that I've learned aren't dictating where I'm going on the fingerboard, okay? Because I've practiced them in lots of different fingerings, I can go where I want. And that means I can make the music that I want and I'm dictating what the music is and not the actual, you know, I'm not constrained by fingerings. I've practiced this stuff to, uh, to a point where I'm free around the fingerboard and I can really make my own choices of where I want to go and I'm not forced into particular fingering patterns. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed this lesson. You can use these concepts that I'm talking about in different things as well. You can use them in normal arpeggios with the sevenths included. You can use them in scales. 
anything, but just don't get stuck in them same old patterns going up and down. Do learn them. You know, it's important that we are doing the, the scales and the arpeggios and the triads in that way, but it's also important that we're breaking out of what we normally do and doing it in this way that I've been talking about today. So other than that, go over to scottsbetessons.com. I'll put a link, check out the toolkit, lots of free stuff over there for you. Check out the academy. It's We've got a 14-day free trial, so you can check it out completely risk-free and it absolutely rocks. There's full courses in there. There's a huge community. We have live weekly sessions seminars every week because they're live weekly seminars um, featuring some of the best base educators on the planet and tons more so other than that take it easy and i'll see you in the shed (laughs) 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 you know you're back (laughs) Ah! and mother Two thousand and fifteen Kickstarter challenge. Hey everybody. Hey. Hey everybody. Hi everybody. Hello all. Hello.